I'm Tom Hackett, and today we're going to look at Von Neumann's Five Bottlenecks and C6, Part 1. So who is Von Neumann, what are these bottlenecks, and what is C6? Well, let's start with the last question. C6 is a brand new industry standard that's going to be very important for cloud data center servers. And the need for that started decades ago. It started back in the 40s, in 1945, when a mathematician and scientist named John von Neumann came up with the architecture for computers that we use even today. It's called the von Neumann architecture. And it looks like this. You have a processing element, and we'll call it the CPU, connected to memory. And in that memory, we're going to store our program code and our data. We'll feed the computing system through an I.O. device. And we're going to produce output. And that'll go out through another I.O. device. And there we go. So this is the von Neumann architecture. So what's so special about this? Well, keep in mind that today we're very used to computing technology. But back in the 40s, that was before the integrated circuit. It was before transistors. It was when the few computers that existed ran on vacuum tubes. So this was actually very fundamental and important development. And in particular, it was important because the program code was stored in memory along with the data. And that was a particular innovation for the time. So this architecture served us well and jump-started the computing age. But as we got into the 60s and 70s, as more and more applications were being more moved to the computer, requiring more and more memory to hold those applications in the data, it became clear that a bottleneck developed. And this was the memory bottleneck, because every time the CPU wanted to do something, it had to go to memory to access both the program code and the data. And a famous paper was written at the time and called this the von Neumann bottleneck. Now, frankly, I think that's a little disrespectful to Dr. von Neumann. So let's just call it the code bottleneck. Because it was the program code that caused the problem, since it resided down here in memory. And the way to fix that was to give the CPU a little bit of its own memory. And so we call that, of course, the cache where some of the program code and data can reside in the CPU, it can operate on that, uh, that memory content without going out to main memory. And this got us over this code bottleneck. And as long as we're describing what's in the CPU, let's also put in a box here for the processing element, and we'll just call it the core. So this architecture then took off through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and everything went great. Because we were riding this wave, you know, fueled by Moore's Law, where not only were circuits getting denser, but also the CPUs were getting faster and faster and faster. So they went from kilohertz to megahertz to gigahertz. But around 2000, that all kind of came to an end. Because at that point in time, the processor cores topped out at about 2 gigahertz for consumer type processor chips and at about 4 gigahertz for server chips. This became another bottleneck. So we'll call this the core bottleneck because we couldn't run the cores any faster. Now, why couldn't we run them faster? I mean, semiconductor technology continued to evolve. But the problem was thermal. These devices generated too much heat. And the faster you clocked them, the more heat you generated. And it just became impractical to remove that heat from the system. So Intel came up with a solution for this in about 2005 when they decided to add another core into the CPU. So this dual core system could process at least certain applications almost twice as fast at the same clock frequency. So this was a big development. Now if you look at this and say, well, if one core needed its own cache, then logically probably both of these cores would benefit by having their own cache, right? They'll keep things local and run really fast. So 
the problem comes in that, well, what if they both need the same data at around the same time? So let's say processor one, core one, has just changed a data value. Then core two needs that same data. Well, it can't go to memory and get it because that's old data. It can't go to this cache and get it because that data is old. It has to go to the first core. So you need some extra software to manage that. And that's one approach. Or you could take a hardware approach and say, you know, we're going to add in another piece of hardware and we're going to call it the cache coherent interconnect. And by using that hardware, we can then manage hardware cache coherency and keep the whole memory system straight. And so this is what we use today in our cell phones, for instance, in our laptops. It's everywhere. And this gets us part of the way along, but we haven't talked about C6 yet. And in fact, we have three more bottlenecks to go. So we're going to cover those in the next installment of this video. And until then, I'm Tom Hackett for Whiteboard Wednesday.